Well, welcome again to RD Works Learning Lab. Now, you may be surprised to find uh, that we're no longer in RD Works, and here we are in Photoshop. Well, that's because today we're going to deal with some uh, some graphics. A friend recently died, and my wife, as a tribute, bought her daughter a rose to plant. It was a rose with a special name called Mum in a Million and she decided it would be a nice idea to put some sort of peg in the ground beside the rose when it was planted to make sure that the rose name was never forgotten. So she tasked me with making something that would do the job. So my first stage was to take a picture of a rose that was growing in my garden and import it into Photoshop. The next stage was to work on the photograph and remove the insects and the spots and blemishes and then finally I removed the background and this was the rose that I finished up with. I then tried to convert it into some sort of grayscale image. I failed miserably to achieve what I wanted because I was up against a time scale. So I hunted around the internet and instead I found this piece of clip art as a, a suitable black and white substitute for the project. It turns out that today we're not going to do quite as much detail graphics as I thought um, and we're going to have to leave that for another project but we'll carry on developing the rose peg idea. So here we are back on familiar ground and one of the first things that we need to do is to go to import. So we're now importing the bitmap file. If we use the mouse wheel and scroll out we'll find out that the rose is sitting there in the middle of our page. We can pick it up and move it around and do anything we like with it. It's a bitmap. If you remember the name of the rose is called Mum in a Million and I would like to be able to put Mum in a Million in an arc over the top of the rose before I cut the outside out into some sort of a peg shape. The problem is this piece of software uh, RD Works doesn't really support any sort of graphics work. You can put text in but you can't do much with the text. So to produce our artwork what I've decided to do is go into a piece of software that I'm familiar with. Um, this is Acoustica CD Label Maker. So basically it's designed for manufacturing CD labels but at the moment we've got a blank page here which is basically the, the insert front for a CD box. I found my artwork here. I'm going to drag it in and then I'm just going to add some text to it and my text is here. So I want my text to read in capitals mum in a minute and then I want to turn it into something which is a bit more striking and easier to engrave and also increase the size a little bit to something like yeah that's probably about right 14 point and then finally um, I get the opportunity here to add something like curved text and not only does it curve it I can play around with the curve shape by, at the moment, without going into the settings, it's set as an ellipse. We should be able to make this into a suitable size to fit over the top of my rose. So let's just click that closed and open up the rose itself again and then we'll reposition the rose underneath Mum in a Million. A little bit too close. Perfect. Centred? Not quite that's about it. Okay so we've finished now we've created that extremely quickly and simply so all I've got to do now is to do um, an export image so we'll save it as a bitmap file and we'll go for the maximum resolution and we'll save it into rows 1. Well okay here we are back in RD Works, and this time let's try and import that image so we'll import the image so we can go to the middle of these seven magnifying glasses and reset the page size 
and there it is sitting in the middle of the page. Now what I really want to do is, happy with that, that's going to be etched and I'm now going to put a polygon line or a polyline around the outside of it. So let's just start from here and do something like something like that. We can look up here in the top right hand corner and find that we've got two black layers. What I would think would be easier is if I separate that in, into a red layer so that I know that it's going to be cut separately. So we've now created a red layer which says it's scanned. That's not a problem because all we've got to do is click on the red layer and we can change that to output speed. We're going to turn that into around about say 12 millimeters and if blowing yes mode scan now the mode is going to be cut and power is going to be between I would think probably 80 and 85 through power we should leave that on okay so there's our cut layer after our scan layer. So let's have a look at what the scan layer is all about. Click click. Scan speed um, 100. We've got quite a little bit of detail here that we're trying to scan so we don't want to go probably too fast. Uh, processing 30-30. Uh, yeah it probably sounds about okay 30% power. And the interval I think we could probably well there's quite a lot of detail in there maybe we'll keep it down at point 0.2 point 0.2 enter okay so now what we really want to do is to try and run our preview to make sure everything's running okay so we'll go to preview and here we've got mum in a million and we'll just select the simulation and at the moment we've got the speed set to 1.5 and there we go so we can speed this up a factor of 10 and then we slow it down and we see it going around to do the outside now escape well done so that all works all we've got to do now really is to output our file I think this time what we might try and do is connect up our laptop to the machine to download the file to the machine um, the machine was supplied with a nice long USB cable um, which has got the correct gender in it for connecting into the computer at one end and the machine at the other. Now it is important that you don't use the top one which is a USB uh, flash drive connector but you use the second one down which is the PC input. Okay now we'll turn the machine on. Not the laser just the machine power. You can hear the head resetting and you heard a little did it as it connected to the computer. Now the previous test, SQ test, is sitting up there in memory and we want to replace that with our rows. Here's how we go about doing that. Right, now we've, we must make sure that rows 1, which is the file that we want to transfer, is live on the screen with all its data. Okay, now we're going to come down to this bottom corner here and we're going to check that it says device USB auto. If there's an IP address in there just change it to USB auto. Okay, now we're going to come up to here where it says download and we're going to press the download button. So now we've got a little window in the middle of the screen um, which says give the document a name. <laughs> it's already got a name but for some reason or other um, it doesn't want to know that it says default in there it says name write either um, 0 to 9 or A to Z it's obviously not capable of reading very long complicated words so we'll call this one R for rows should we we'll keep it really simple OK file downloaded success 
let's go and have a look on the machine. And there we are. R is now in memory. And so if we do enter, oh, probably we have to do file. And R is over there as well. And here it is, sitting there. And we can probably do enter. And this gives us the opportunity, if we want, to modify the settings. But we don't, so we're quite happy with that. Um, we can just do file again and go down to run. Or we can do track to start with. So I'll just put a piece of acrylic, this is two millimeter acrylic, into the machine here. And I will press the track button. It says track, I shall now press enter. Well, it came off the material. So we need to move the material down. And we should be able to do the same thing again, I would have thought. Track, enter, enter. Could probably go over a bit more. There we go. So we now know the material will fit the outside of the shape. Yeah, we'll run this with no air on the cutting head and we're running it with the lid open. So there will be some smoke, but it should extract quite well. So we'll press the enter button now and the job should run. that even with the lid open the uh, the gas <coughs> you can see that even with the lid open the fumes are being pulled away I will just close to show you the difference that it makes I think we could run that cut a little bit faster. <clears throat> here we've got something that we think uh, could be useful. Let's just see what we've got on here. Look, we've got a little bit of uh, a little bit of vapour sitting on the surface there. So there's our first project. Well, I hope you can join me next time when I'll find another project for us to play with.